a good morning everyone jason here today we will be learning how to conceptualize creature designs based on existing animals we will be exploring techniques of creating anthropomorphic and chimera creatures anthropomorphism or anthro for short is the process of assigning human qualities onto non-human non entities such as animals. It usually involves converting quadrupedal animals, animals that work on all four limbs, to bipedal animals, animals that walk on two legs. Chimera is originally used to describe a specific monster in the Greek mythology. It is a lion with the head of a goat and a tail that ends with a snake's head. Today, it is used to describe any mythical or fictional creature that has body parts taken from various animals. With that, let's dive into today's demo to see what we've got. So, mm, I start off by asking myself what animals do I want to see more of in games and in films. Uh, what animals are underrepresented? And one of the first animals that came into my mind is the koala, the koala bear. And I mean, it, it's, it's just so cute. Um, and it's a pity that we don't see more of these uh, creatures uh, in games and film. So for the first thumbnail, I wanted to do a a grumpy koala, you know, a creature that, that goes, uh, you know, you wake me up for this kind of look on his face. So I first start um, by doing a loose gesture of the creature. Um, the important thing here is to get the proportion and the pose of the creature correct. And the pose is very important because uh, even at this uh, conceptual stage, because it can describe the personality uh, of this particular creature. So for this particular creature, it's uh, more of an intro. Um, so the personality aspect is quite important. So after the initial uh, gesture sketch, I create another layer on top of it. Uh, to do the tighten up line work. Uh, do note that this is not the final line art, so it's still okay to be a bit rough. In fact, I kind of uh, like to be rough because uh, at this stage it still doesn't it, it doesn't tie me down, you know, to the concept. I, I can still be somewhat um, imaginative with it. So I'm from Singapore and I have served in the military. So I try to be uh, accurate and base my drawings uh, off of uh, real life equipments, those that I've actually personally used before. And I think as a concept artist, it is good to tap on your own uh, personal experience to add a bit of authenticity into your designs. Uh, so for this, I mean, I've, I've used this rifle before, so I know exactly how it feels when you're carrying it, you know, how, which, what sort of pose you should uh, be in uh, when you're running with a rifle like this, and how to actually hold it. So yes, um, just the adding the water bottle in, very important uh, equipment for a soldier. Adding in the, the vest and the back pouch behind. Adding the little fluffy tail for the koala. 
and finally the legs. So with this, I'm, I'm more or less done. Um, just move on to the next, next thumbnail. Save my file, very important. Okay, so for the next thumbnail, I'm still sticking with the koala, uh, but I wanted to do a, a cuter creature. I'm not saying that the first one isn't cute, but I really want this to be like, really cute. You know, imagine this is like a level 1 creep you will encounter uh, when you first venture out of your starting town in an RPG game. This is sort of a creature you will see, right? Uh, it's so cute that you, you, you don't even want to kill it. So koalas have very fluffy ears. And I thought uh, maybe I can replace them with a butterfly or morph wings uh, in place of those ears. And I remember that moths have uh, very hairy bodies. So I thought the moth wings would be more appropriate on the koala bear. As usual, I uh, start off with a gesture drawing and, and I do the cleanup layer above it. Again, I'm just trying to emphasize on the cute quality of uh, this creature. I gave it like a sad look, like a oh, please don't kill me kind of look. A very very appropriate for a level 1 kind of creature that you encounter. In retrospect, this uh, particular design kind of is kind of inspired by uh, Stitch from Vivo and Stitch. And down to the proportions. It's just a subconscious thing, I guess. I added in the claws. Um, it does make the design somewhat more dangerous, um, but I think it's good to suggest the mode of attack this creature will use on the player. So basically, the, the this creature will claw at the player if it's uh, aggroed. So I opened up this, um, I just copied it and pasted it in, into a new canvas, this image I've, uh, that I saw from, from, from Google, so as to better copy from it. I really wanted the, the wings to, to be hairy as well, so I added a little bit of fur here. And of course, some custom designs. Uh, again, not super detailed at this moment. It's more of a, a, a placeholder kind of thing. Uh, usually, it would take a couple of iterations before uh, the art director can approve this concept. But unless you know you really hit hit it out of the ballpark with the initial concept, then it's good to go. But usually, um, we will take a few rounds before we can confirm the idea. So over here, um, I cheated by just duplicating the wings to the other side. Um, in the world of concept art, uh, we try to work smart and not work hard. So uh, do whatever it takes to to uh, cut down on the time you spend per concept. So by copy and pasting, it's it's very efficient that way. Next, I wanted to try a more traditional fantasy game style kind of creature. Um, so the previous one was a somewhat of a chimera uh, example. This is going back to the the intro, where the this rhino is given at, uh, human like qualities. And I chose the rhino because you know 
fight those are cool. And I wanted him to look badass and evil, right? So I I reference of um executional costumes here. Uh initially I was uh, looking at some horse armor. Uh, but I thought eh, maybe the executioner's sort of headdress make it look more evil. And so I proceeded to cover up his face with a, a mask. Yeah, so I added a little bit of glow on the eyes, again to make him look uh, much more evil. And while I wanted him to, to initially I was referencing uh, the ex executioner's uh, costume, but the end result looked more like a warrior or a knight. Um, but it doesn't really matter for this particular exercise because we are not um, really you know pigeonhole into a single archetype so sometimes um, you know one idea can evolve into another so just just let your creative juices flow freely Right now I'm just um, embellishing some details on the armor. Adding more spikes is an easy way to make the creature look more evil. Uh, in general, sharp things symbolizes danger. So um, yeah. When the humans look at sharp things, we immediately assume that it's uh, dangerous, like a knife or something. We are trained since young to you know, be careful around knives, be careful around needles. That's where we are. our brain, brains are programmed to sort of fear sharp objects. When drawing an entro creatures such as this, uh, it is helpful to do the pose yourself and to really examine how your hands look. You know when you're grabbing onto objects, uh, for example, so that your the the pose looks more believable. After all, it's taking on human qualities. Right here, I'm uh, adding even more spikes at the back. I guess I was uh, somewhat influenced or, or inspired by the uh, Bristleback design. Uh, Bristleback is a is a uh, hero in Dota Two. So again, like I mentioned, um, just uh, whenever in doubt, uh, look at your own hands, how it will. How your fingers bend around an object when you're you're gripping onto stuff, uh, so that you know you can draw more realistically, and your drawings are more believable. Not overly concerned about how this uh, arm guard, gauntlet, whatever they call it, uh, or or the leg armor will look. Again, um, this is probably not the only drawing I will do for this character if it gets approved. So I'm just uh, very quickly trying to get the feel of this character uh, rather, than, rather than being overly focused on the details. So some I feel that this character is not exactly uh, in balance, so I, I, I do a very quick uh, 
flip canvas horizontal to check and indeed the what leg is this the the left leg I think uh, it's a position a bit too forward so I'm, I'm just scaling it back sorry the right leg is the, the right leg is uh, was too too forward just now doing a uh, simple weapon uh, before I quite done for this concept uh, again uh, for the for this particular exercise, um, the weapon is not that crucial, uh, so I'm just doing a somewhat generic design. Again, once the concept is approved, uh, I may do like a separate weapon design for this character. Okay, I, I, I think I'm more or less done with this, uh, and I'll move on to the next one. So for the next time there, I wanted to do something more animalistic. Um, the previous three examples, uh, despite the second one being a chimera, it, it was still kind of bipedal. Um, so I wanted something that's more, more like an animal. So I'm... Um, Decided to go with something that's more more like a dragon, you know, chimera, chimera dragon. Again, just doing like the simple gesture sketch of like an idea of what it should be. Uh, if you saw my screen just now, listen to some music. Music is very important uh, to me at least uh, in my workflow. Good music can inspire you. So over here I'm uh, basing my head of this serpent-like feature uh, off the King Cobra. I always thought that its head looked pretty damn cool. This uh, thin feeler-like hands are uh, inspired from uh, the crab and the prawn. I like the the curl of this uh, feeler hands, kind of like a Grim Reaper's scythe. It's very um, distressing to see. And I really wanted this creature to be scary, you know, like. Um, Something off the player's nightmares. Like when you're playing this game and then you see a creature like this marching down, you know, in front of you, and you're like, oh damn, you can turn back. Something like that. So for the body, it's pretty pretty standard kind of dragon body. Nothing to really shout about. For the back, it's um, kind of inspired by a beetle-like body where they have like segmented. Um, armor like I'm not exactly sure how to call it segments um, but yeah uh, adding more spikes more evil more scary more spikes never have enough of these things. I wanted to keep this uh, creature somewhat lean. 
as you can see the body is quite thin for a creature of this size want it to be agile you know it's coming after you and it's what's, what what I usually think about when I design all these creatures how it would affect the gameplay how, how the creature behaves in the game Uh, doing some last minute uh, changes here, I didn't really like how these uh, main fillers were, were positioned. Don't be afraid to make this sort of changes, and it's in fact better to do it now rather than when you introduce color. Okay, so for the last concept, um, I'm basing it off an alligator, and I'm, I wasn't too sure initially of uh, where to go with this design like I initially I wanted it to to be of the sci-fi theme like I wanted to create a, a sci-fi example um, but but I wasn't sure what as you can see here initially I was uh, trying to design like a Gatling gun like uh, something the the heavy from uh, Team Fortress who carry but it, it eventually I settled on a Hawaiian ukulele player I was, like, I was like looking at the um, reference image and the alligator was giving this smirk it was like looking super chill I was like thinking oh, it, it looks like a musician He's really pleased with himself, you know. That's the sort of anger I'm um, going with. Just look at him. Smoking. Yeah, so I really want to be authentic with this, so we get a Hawaiian, Hawaiian t-shirt, just to be sure. And left the uh, top two buttons unbuttoned, because he, he doesn't give a fish about your opinions. And, and these are the little things, you know, the, the little bits of personality that you can add. To your and throw designs so to make the viewer relate more to this particular character I even added in a cigarette again he, he, he doesn't give doesn't care about your opinions trying to get the ukulele in it's important not to uh, draw the music instrument to be too big because it will look like a guitar the four strings definitely help I'm trying to make sure that it's fairly accurate So I separated this uh, ukulele into its own layer so that it's easier for me to draw in the hands later. The rest of the body is pretty standard. I'm doing a quick flip of the canvas again to check on the balance of the character. 
it's usually quite tricky with um, creatures with tails because the, the, the tail actually, you know, helps to balance the, the, the creature. So the leg itself can be positioned a bit more forward, such in the case as the kangaroo, it's, it actually uses its tail to, to balance itself. So I'm drawing this uh, floral patterns on a separate layer. Initially, I was trying to draw it on the same layer, but I, I thought it, it looked kind of funny. Uh, and I wanted to do it on a separate layer because I can then, uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm changing the opacity of the whole layer. So it looks great. Not overpowering. So I'm pretty much done with this assignment. The, the last thing to do is to just combine all five of these designs into one page. So it's just a, a, a massive canvas uh, that I just try to position them nicely. And then of course uh, to label them. Label, labeling is quite important because um, it makes it easier for the art director to immediately say that oh you know I like I like the design five you know go for it rather than like uh, I I like the one in the middle you can't be sure which one is in the middle and of course to to label your artwork um, and the project title so it's uh, easier for tracking and that's about it um yeah I hope you guys learned something about creature design and I hope to see your creatures. Now that I've watched the video, I'm curious to see what kind of creature you will design. So post in the comment sections your creations. If you're interested to learn more about creature design, I highly recommend this book, Science of Creature Design by Tara Wheatlatch. Um, in this book, you will find more information about animal anatomy that will surely help uh, in your creature design. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, design some creatures, and have some coffee, and I'll see you in the next video.